will land in. If you just wave and you have a seat. Okay. Marcus Banks. Lauren Davis. And Carla Rogan. Over on the uh, Team Republicans. S.D. Kaiser. Caroline King. Elena Gerani. And Abby Michael. Now I'd like to introduce, if they would come up front, the president of the Young Democrats is uh, Renna Martin, and the vice president is Nick Angiano. So the president of the uh, uh, Teen Republicans is uh, Caroline King, if you would come up. And vice president is Taylor London, if you would come up. Uh, I believe Nick has something to say, and then Caroline, and then we'll get started. Thank you. Uh, hi everybody, I just want to thank you guys for coming out today, uh, all the teachers who brought the classes here. Thank you very much, we're very excited, and I'm sure that two Republicans are very excited too. Uh, we just wanted to do a little disclaimer and say that uh, these views that we're presenting today, these are not necessarily our personal views, they're not necessarily even the party as the whole's views, these are our candidates' views, Ken Cuccinelli and Terry McCall. So, uh, just thank you all once again, and I think Caroline would like to say something. Hey guys. Hey guys, um, my name is Caroline and I'm the president of Teen Republicans. I would like to thank Daniel Webb for coming out today and supporting us. He is the chairman of the Roanoke Valley Young Republicans and the vice chair of the young, young Republican Federation of Virginia. So if you desire to collect literature, volunteer, or simply learn more, we urge you to approach and ask if you feel inclined. Also, a special thank you to Laura Stanley, the senator's wife. They are both with us today and we greatly appreciate it. So, just a reminder that each person speaking represents just the candidate, and we just ask that you guys are really respectful because it takes a lot to get up here anyway. So, we hope that you enjoy and just that enjoy live respectfully. So, have fun. All right. Uh, we used a traditional approach earlier and had a coin toss to see who would speak first, and um, the uh, Young Democrats did win the coin toss. So, um, Will Landon, if you would get up, please. Your question is, what is your candidate's plan to create jobs for Virginians and to grow the economy? Democratic gubernatorial candidate Terry McCullough is a businessman, entrepreneur, and father who has lived in Fairfax County, Virginia for over 20 years. He was lighting asphalt at the age of only 14. <clears throat> with a platform headed, putting jobs first, this man knows the importance of money for necessities and education because he paid for his college experience with his own job. Now, as McCullough runs for Virginia's governor, he knows the importance of creating jobs for Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> After the government shutdown in 2013, the funding for many non-essential government programs were cut and the employees were not paid during the shutdown, causing distress for many families. With 170,000 federal employees in Virginia, McCall places importance on the creation of non-governmental and small business jobs. As of August 2013, the unemployment rate in Virginia was a shocking 5.8%. McCulloch wishes to lower the unemployment rate of Virginia and to prepare Virginians for future struggles that may occur. His main focus is on energy-related and biotechnology jobs, including wind projects and energy-related construction. Next, McCulloch wants to promote efficiency and focus. He plans to eliminate red tape and to streamline any inefficient government programs. For many businesses, the state bureaucracy seems confusing and outdated. Terry will empower the Chief Jobs Creation Officer to be a single point of contact for all business growth activities. McCulloch wishes to support struggling economies by increasing focus on South Side and Southwestern Virginia and partnering with the tobacco producer. Terry McCulloch wishes to improve the commerce, livelihood, and lifestyle of all Virginia. He sees the great future that the Virginians can have and the importance placed on it. Efficiency and focus, the investment in small business jobs, and building up Virginia's strength. With the slogan of putting jobs first, McCulloch sees a lot of promise in the future of the livelihood of Virginian citizens. Terry McCulloch. And the same question uh, goes to you, SD. And uh, what is your candidate's plan to create jobs for Virginians and to grow the economy? First of all, I'd like to thank the Young Democrats for agreeing to this important debate. Ms. Wood for moderating. 
and all these students for coming to see and hear for yourself for both sides. I'm here today to explain to you why Virginia should let Ken Cuccinelli as our governor for the next four years. Specifically, how he will create jobs and grow our economy. After hearing Ken's positions on the issues, I'm confident that you will agree that he's the best leader to move Virginia forward. First, a little bit about Ken Cuccinelli. He was sworn in as Virginia's Attorney General in 2010. As Attorney General, he has gained reputation for preserving liberty and defending the U.S. Constitution. Prior to this, he was a leading conservative member of the Virginia State Senate from 2002 to 2010. As Attorney General, Cuccinelli fought hard for those who had been wrongly convicted and was an instrumental in the Thomas Hainsworth case. Hainsworth spent 27 years behind bars for crimes he did not commit after being mistakenly identified by rape in 1984. After new DNA evidence became available, Hinn went to Virginia Court of Appeals and personally argued on behalf of Mr. Hainsworth's innocence. In December, the court declared Hainsworth an innocent man declaring his name. Then Kitchenelli will fight for Virginians just as he fought for Mr. Hainsworth. Kitchenelli has a plan that will create 58,000 new jobs here in Virginia. His plan is designed to unleash the spirit of ingenuity of Virginia's innovators, empower middle class families by allowing them to keep more of the hard earned paychecks, and reduce government barriers to crowd out economic opportunities. Pitt is the only candidate who has gotten both of the major business endorsements so far in this race, from North Virginia Technology Council and Virginia Small Businesses, the NFIB. That under his leadership, we can continue to grow our economy and create jobs for more Virginians, including us teenagers looking to get our first jobs. So thank you. Yeah! <laughs> uh, young Democrat, Democrats, you have the opportunity to rebuttal for 30 seconds. Anything? Would you like to take that? No, we're going. Okay. Um, Team Republicans, is there anything you would like to rebut in, from what you heard from young people? Okay. Okay, we'll go to the next question. Republicans? Caroline King. What is your candidate's approach to taxing and spending? Ken Cuccinelli believes we should invest in transportation and our schools while avoiding large tax increases. The McDonald administration has been able to do all of this while maintaining Virginia's triple A bond rating. Cuccinelli would continue these policies and spur further economic growth by lowering the personal income tax to 5% and the business income tax to 4%. Cuccinelli would pay for this tax cut by eliminating about 15% of corporate loopholes and tax rates that don't work as well as the other 85%. Despite Cuccinelli's pro business stance, he is against corporate welfare. Cuccinelli opposes tax hikes that Northern Virginia developers are seeking to pay for roads and blocks services, and has pledged to put special interest tax credits in the top and bottom. Ken Cuccinelli, in particular, realizes the need to invest in public education. He supports offering tax credits to low-income families to help pay for preschool through the Virginia Preschool Initiative. He also believes we should improve and expand the Virginia Educational Opportunity Scholarship Tax Credit to provide options to students in failing schools. On the other hand, Mr. McCullough has made a lot of campaign promises without providing a specific detailed plan for how to pay for them. <laughs> According to an in-depth analysis of Mr. McCullough's policy proposal and campaign promises, Mr. McCullough's budget would cost Virginia an additional $14 billion over four years, or $1,700 a year for a family of four. The only way to pay for the cost would be to raise taxes on Virginians. Ken Cuccinelli has both the experience and the vision to lead Virginia forward. He is who we need. Same question goes to you. What is your candidate's position on taxing and spending? Dan McCullough, the Democratic candidate for governor, wants to help small businesses thrive and increase the job opportunities in the way He understands that a certain tax cuts are absurd, including cutting state over tax by one third, cutting state over tax by 13 percent. McCullough knows that by reforming certain taxes, including the business professional occupation licensing tax, the merchant's capital tax, and the machinery and tool tax, the businesses have the opportunity to grow since they are not being taxed on growth receipts which can be extremely detrimental to businesses is not yet popular. This reform would also be helpful for growing businesses needing to purchase equipment as they would not have to worry about tax depending on cost. 
We have a jelly believes the unplanned and cut taxes will boost consumer spending and draw in more tax revenue. But in reality, this plan will cause Virginia to lose $1.4 billion from its annual budget. Taxes are necessary to pay teachers, providing better education for students, and paying for highway repairs, which in turn creates much needed jobs. But excessive taxes are ridiculous. Teachers and workers of the Virginia Department of Transportation can't possibly expect it. Be expected to spend the amount of money needed to replace such a deficit, especially if they are losing job, but jobs to budget cuts and barely able to make ends meet with current salaries. <clears throat> Cuccinelli has stated that he also plans to fix his deficit by closing loopholes, services, and programs, but never once will question as he specified which programs, loopholes, or service, services he plans on cutting. It could be parts of education, transportation, or subsidy work as well. Virginia used to be ranked first in the best states for business due to low taxes, but has digressed third rank due to its failure to address transportation works caused by low taxes. Guccinelli's plan were to come into effect with transportation of a person, causing Virginia's favorability of business to decrease. To ensure that business will thrive, the call has a plan that incorporates a locality based model, allowing individual areas to find revenue and neutral. Okay, that's time. Excuse me, that's time, Marcus. Okay. Young Republicans, I mean, Team Republicans, you have an opportunity to use a 30 second rebuttal. Okay. Actually, Kuchinelli has not stated specifically on which loopholes he plans to close because he plans to create a condition to rank every credit for loophole in the Virginia tax code based upon effectiveness, not solely alone, but with the General Assembly and legislature. The General Assembly will be asked to eliminate the least effective ones. The decision on which to eliminate is going to be decided by legislature. He has not stated which one he plans to eliminate because it is not solely up to him. He is a group man. He's not running solely alone in the government. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, did you want any 30 second rebuttal? No? Okay. We move on to the next question then. And we have Lauren. What is your candidate's position on the Affordable Care Act, a.k.a. Obamacare? I heard that address last week. Cushnelli attacked a new law on flood and national embarrassment. It stopped an insurance company from discriminating against Americans with pre-existing conditions and embarrassment. The plaintiffs have 95% of Americans insured this year. The, embarrassment is, the embarrassing thing is that 50% of Americans this year alone were uninsured. Laws work, work also to keep premiums and premiums down and prevent insurance companies from abusing and deny, denying care to people who need it. It also reduces out of pocket costs for tens of millions of families and small business owners. This is made affordable by providing the largest middle class tax cut in healthcare industry. The big factor of the Affordable Care Act is reducing the deficit by more than 100 million over the next 10 years and over 1 trillion over the second decade. The Affordable Care Act allows individuals and families to apply for coverage over one single application and one process. Even though the application process has been experiencing difficulties because of the mass numbers of front try to apply to the server at one time. A senior article was released saying that every time the Democratic Party um, asked for more funding to ensure that the application process was moving, the Republican Party shot down every time. Thank you, Lori. Okay. Elena? Same question to you. Please, your candidate's position on um, Obamacare. One of Ken Cuginelli's main focuses is the negative effects Obamacare will have in Virginia. The recent failure of the Obamacare website to enroll Americans in their new health exchanges perfectly illustrates the fact that the government fails when it tries to do too much. Free market solutions and state initiatives are better than a massive one size fits all federal program, which forces young people to pay more for a benefit many do not want and cannot afford. Ken Cuginelli understands this, which is why he became the first Attorney General to sue the federal government over Obamacare. Obamacare is a bad policy for many reasons. Here are two of them. First, Obama promised that if you like your doctor and your plan, you can keep them. Millions of Americans are finding this not to be the case. 
Two million Americans have already lost coverage. Second, the Affordable Care Act is supposed to make health insurance more affordable, but for many Americans, it has just become more expensive. Jennifer Harris, a young lawyer in California, thought she had a great deal paying $98 for her individual plan. She got a real surprise this month when the company said it would cancel her policy because it does not comply with the Affordable Care Act. The cheapest plan she has been able to find will now cost $238 for worse coverage. Another woman summarized her discontent with Obamacare after receiving a letter saying her premiums would rise by 50% to comply with the new law. She said, I was all for Obamacare until I found out that I would be the one paying for it. Government-run health care does not equal free health care, but it does mean greater expenses for middle-class families, less choice in jobs, and a decline in individual liberty and state rights. For rights not granted to the federal government in the Constitution are supposed to be reserved to the states. This is why Ken Cuccinelli is opposed to Obamacare and will continue to fight it as our governor. Thank you. Okay. Young Democrats, would you like to take an opportunity to have your 30 second rebuttal? Um, I would like to say that it's not the Obamacare that's an issue, it's the private insurance companies that have been blocking people. So it's not our fault that um, that's what happened, it's the private insurance companies. Thank you. Okay, so Republicans, you have 30 seconds for rebuttal if you choose. And I guess you can. <laughs> um, another important issue that the Democrats forgot to said was that Terry McAuliffe claims that he will be paying for his campaign promises by accepting the Obama Medicaid expansion, but this is expanding Medicaid by 40%, and we're already $17 trillion in debt, and this will only uh, risk Virginia's budget, and then try to keep the federal government's promises that they're most unlikely to keep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next question. This is Abby Michael. Yeah. <laughs> Abby, what is your candidate's uh, energy plan? Ken Cuccinelli's energy plan is focused on creating jobs, reducing waste, and reducing tax taxes, especially for lower and middle class families. Cuccinelli has a strategy. The strategy is to utilize all of our natural resources responsibly. Cuccinelli believes that coal, along with other traditional resources, is still a very important part of Virginia's energy plan. In 2009, Mr. McAuliffe announced that he never wanted to see another coal plant built in Virginia. Just this month, he came out in favor of new EPA regulations that would not just limit new coal plants, but force existing ones to close. If we try to cut back on coal, like Mr. Cox points, a very large number of jobs will be lost in Southwest Virginia. Cuccinelli is a firm believer in environmental responsibility and will reduce the excessive regulations so that more energy resources may be developed and high paying jobs can be created. We will fight for Virginia's right to responsibly explore our abundant offshore energy resources so that quality jobs can be created in the immediate term. The plan supports development of a wide range of clean power options, including nuclear, wind, solar, biomass, and geothermal, without relying on government subsidies and encourage research in clean technology. Carla, same question to you. What is your candidate's energy plan? Similar to Ken Cuccinelli, Terry McAuliffe is all for creating jobs here in Virginia. Uh, it's true that Terry McAuliffe did reportedly express his support towards the Environmental Protection Agency's new coal rates. The EPA's new coal regulations will minimize carbon emissions by taking advantage of modern technologies. Carbon capture and storage, or CCS, is a form of clean coal technology that allows power plants to trap and store carbon emissions, thus removing harmful carcinogens from the environment. CCS would continue the use of coal, but drastically reduce the carbon emissions. The goal is to demonstrate that CCS can operate reliably and safely on large power plants. Only first-generation CCS projects are now being built. However, the second generation is expected to lower cost and improve performance. 
While the use of coal will continue well into our lifetime, it is important to develop alternative sources of energy. Recent polls by the American Council of Renewable Energy shows that Virginia's voters support the development of clean energy. 52% of voters say that they would encourage the use of natural gas, followed by solar power, wind power, and coal coming into power. For, and also, I would like to say that the U.S. has created over 2,600,000 clean energy jobs, and also that the, renewable, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory reports that Virginia has over 100 megawatts of wind power that we could be using. If we start to use this wind power in Virginia, it could create anywhere between 9,700 jobs and 11,600 jobs in Virginia. Terry McAuliffe is putting jobs first in Virginia, and he sees these energy issues as a powerful way to stimulate the economy and get people back to work. Another issue that I did not address is that just last summer, 1,200 miners in Bristol, Virginia, got the news that they were all losing their jobs. Alpha Natural Resources announced the closure of eight mines in Virginia, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania, partly as a result of new EPA regulations. As Governor Kim Cochinelli will fight these harmful EPA regulations. I would like to say that the EPA is all for clean coal. We want to make sure that the environment will last long. An example of when these regulations have helped is in California, when they went through a lot of environmental struggles because of the mining. The California Clean Air Act of 1988 was very helpful. Also, regulations will help transition to clean energy for the future. Okay, thank you. Okay, it is time to change our panel members, if you guys would stand. And while they're changing and new people are coming up, I would like to tell all of you. Okay, Patrick Regal. And Brenna Martin. Ray Johnson. Okay. And for the Team Republicans, we have uh, Ashlyn Dubay. Patrick Elder. Uh, once again, Caroline King. And Taylor Herndon. Okay, so it is time for the uh, Young Democrats. Alyssa? Your question, Alyssa. What is your candidate's plan to help make college affordable for students? As the Democratic candidate for governor of Virginia, Terry McAuliffe's main educational focus is to, to provide more support for Virginia's community colleges. This means allocating more money to these colleges through state-supported challenge grants in order to make higher education accessible for students who may not have the necessary financial needs. The college also wants to increase the flexibility and authority of school officials and department heads, allowing them to be free from purchasing and hiring restrictions and allow them to run their schools in the best interest of the students. The college's plan also includes increased support for workforce development programs and collaboration with local high schools to help guide students to the college that works best for them and to make college both accessible and affordable to those students. The college wants to strongly emphasize financial aid for public four-year schools, making it readily available for those in need of it. It wants to ensure proper representation on school governing boards, letting all members of the school community get in. This means students, parents, teachers, and all others associated with the school system will have a say in who runs the school board. McCulloch wants to focus on expansion of schools that need it, keeping acceptance rates high and prices affordable, while also keeping class sizes small. His plans include renewing commitment by the state to academic freedom for professors, making employment data accessible for universities, and to increase support for research development. He plans to support returning veterans who want to come back to school and to pursue online and educational um, methods as a cost-effective alternative to private schools. He plans to increase community college articulation of readings, similar to CCAP provided by Virginia Western to many of us, to make private school a reality for many students who are willing to work to get there. Thank you. 
same question to you. Your candidate's position, please, on helping to make college affordable for students. Ken Kitchenelli understands the importance of higher education and building a strong middle class. He has a detailed plan to make college affordable for us by stressing four principles, economic growth, employability, affordability, and accountability. Kitchenelli has a Kitchenelli reform college career readiness program and includes community input beyond the board level into curriculum and expands internships with local businesses. Kitchenelli would like to make an increase in private sector partnerships with higher education institutes and input the STEM internship program. He would also like to increase tuition assistance grants to a maximum of $3,500 for undergraduates and $3,700 for graduates of Virginia's private college. He also has a four-year grant tuition plan where a freshman entering college would be able to walk in tuition for the full four years that they are there. For students enrolling in science and liberal art bachelor degrees, Cuccinelli would require that they accept all AP and IB scores of a four or a five. These policies will help us get the college education without weighing us down with thousands of dollars of unnecessary debt. Thank you. Republicans. Another modification that Kim Cuccinelli would like to make is to modify the Virginia state law to, to allow National Guard members to use education training funds at any academic center. Thank you very much. Mr. McCall received an F. 
However, Chairman Kohler is not worried about that. What Democrat doesn't get in that from the NRA? Even President Barack Obama and current Virginia Senator Tim Kaine. <laughs> Virginia Senator Tim Kaine received an F, and they both won the election last year. This is not a worry, Mr. McCall. He has previously stated, I don't care what great I get from the NRA. I never want to see another Newtown, Aurora, or Virginia Tech massacre ever again. At the most recent gubernatorial debate called at Virginia Tech, McCall expressed that he believes an action on guns is unacceptable, saying, I am standing on stage at Virginia Tech where we experienced one of the most horrific events with a gun in American history. He then added, it's time to stand up. With McCall's support for assault weapons ban, expanded background checks, and limits on high capacity magazines, Virginians will not have the rights approached upon, but their lives protected. McCall is in no way restricting Second Amendment rights, nor is the anti-gun. He even bought a shotgun in January of this year, though I can almost guarantee he was not pleased with this easy purchase. McCall is simply concerned for the safety and well-being of not only Virginians, but Americans. And his determination to amend gun laws will be a benefit to you all. Thank you. Issues. Okay. Well, before I get started, I just want to address the road case. Actually, 
Um, in the Roe versus Wade case, that was the court case, court case that legalized abortion, Roe has now announced her pro-life standpoint and regretfully looks back on her decision calling it a huge mistake. Abortion is a mistake that can't be taken back, however much you regret it. Ken Cuccinelli is pro-life. New technologies and scientific advances have allowed us to see what we already intuitively know, that unborn babies are people too. Unique individuals with beating hearts who are capable of feeling pain. As such, they are entitled to the same human rights as a baby outside of the womb. Cuccinelli understands that the decision to have a child can be a difficult one, which is why he has donated thousands of dollars to crisis pregnancy centers to help women who find themselves in difficult situations. Mr. McAuliffe has attempted to paint Cuccinelli as an extreme on the issue. This includes the false accusation that Cuccinelli would make birth control illegal. Something that Cuccinelli has patently false. Mr. McAuliffe also claims that Cuccinelli is against abortion, even in cases of rape and incest, which, might I add, makes up 1% of all abortions. When it comes to abortion, McAuliffe is the extremist. The Susan B. Anthony list describes McAuliffe's position as supporting a platform of abortion on demand at any time for any reason paid for by Virginia taxpayers. Ken Cuccinelli has a strong record of standing up for women's rights, especially at UVA. In conclusion, Ken Cuccinelli has a long record of experience fighting for issues that matter to women and with continuing efforts as governor. Do not let false accusations and claims of Mr. McAuliffe change your opinion on Ken Cuccinelli. He's there to support you, not to tear you down. Thank you, Sarah. Okay. Patrick, you'll be taking the 30 second rebuttal. All right, just another uh, quick important question. I'm just really wondering why the government should interfere with the woman's body.
imposition on same-sex marriage. Terry McCall believes that every Virginian should be treated equally. This means he favors civil marriage for committed couples of the same sex. He is public com publicly committed to reinstating an executive order last issued by Governor Kane and wishes to outlaw any discrimination in Virginia based upon any issue. He wants to make sure that Virginia is open and welcoming to everyone. He believes, in contrast to Ken Guccinelli, that sexual orientation should not be that that sexual orientation should be included as a protected class under hate crime legislation. Cuccinelli believes that by opposing same-sex marriage, he is upholding the Virginia Constitution, but is ignoring the fact that gay and lesbian couples in Virginia are being denied basic liberties and equal rights as given to them by the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. Cuccinelli also has said that he believes that the homosexual agenda brings around nothing but self-destruction, not only physically, but of their soul. McCollum, at a recent Equality Virginia fundraiser in Arlington, said he believes that everyone should be treated fairly. Although earlier in his political career he said he opposed same-sex marriage, he believes that he realizes it should not be an issue to divide Virginia. In response to the Supreme Court's ruling against the Defense of Marriage Act in July, McCollum praised the decision, saying that I applaud the Supreme Court for the decision today because everyone should be treated equally. While he supports equality, he understands that it is an issue that Virginians of goodwill will come on both sides of. He believes that the Supreme Court's decision moves the United States in the right direction, but there is more to be done. He believes that Virginia should be the best place to live, to work, and to raise a family, and there should be no place in our future for intolerance or discrimination. But um, we would just like to thank you once again for being a respectful audience, especially on such a touchy issue. And um, we would once again thank the Young Democrats for agreeing to debate with us. And we hope that you'll consider supporting King Kuchinelli as well.